Hi, everyone. <laughs> Say hi, Garrison. Hi, Garrison. Damn it. That's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> well, well. All right, so this deck is unbeatable. Like, you've it run, is not. You haven't lost a single game in two weeks, right? No. I lost a, I lost a game tonight, and I lost a round last week. Oh, spoiler alert. He lost a game tonight. A game. Um, so anyways, we're going to do a deck tech video for this Simic brew that he came up with. This Simic ramp. Yeah. Garrison. And it's more ramping. And now. yes, there was there was a question or a comment that said I think Garrison's favorite colors are Simic, and that's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. And his second favorite colors are Simic with a splash <laughs> of red something. usually. Yes, typically. Yep. So, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and like go over the deck list, the cards, and then Garrison will kind of talk about like how the deck flows. So, do you want to read them? You want me to read them? Go ahead. All right. So we got four Dream Root Cascades here, uh, four Bark Channel Pathways. Three Bosaijus, two Ottawaras, a Vine Glimmer Snarl. That seems really out of place. I'll tell you why. Okay. I'll get there. Uh, nine Beta Forests and four Beta Islands. Yep. Um, and then, so the only one drops in the deck are the Tamiyo Safekeeping, which is the best counter spell in standard. I'm just it saying is, that right it now. It is really good. Counter target spell, gain two life. It's amazing. And it's any permanent, right? So you can yes, save and anything. I, so watch the videos because that actually it is relevant. relevant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then on two, you have four Prosperous Innkeepers, which are like your typical two-drop ramp, although it's only like one extra ramp. Sure. It doesn't, it's not like ramping growth or anything. It's more the fixing. Right. Right. And then you got two Decisive Denials, which you always yep. had against me. Yeah. I mean, they're really good. <laughs> like, you just uh, play two because you don't need to play anymore. Right. And then we've got four Topiary Stompers, which I saw all four of them in one you game. You did in like, by like Pissed six off. turns or something. <laughs> Uh, and then we have three Search the Count's Castle. No, oh, no. It's Search for Discovery. Oh, thir yeah. yeah, it's Search for Discovery. It's Search the Count's Castle. Yeah, yeah. My mistake. Uh, yeah, so that's just like your cantrip. Yep. Uh, three Quandrix Cultivators. I, I hate when you play that card against me because it's just big enough of a body that it's like I have to deal with it. So, but to, it be, to be honest, it's like it always seems, every time I play it, it seems just a little bit better than the last time I played it. Yeah. And tonight, like, the reception, it was like, and the land comes into play untapped? It's like, yep, yep. yep. That's so like, I can keep safekeeping. So I can keep, it was exactly <laughs> it, too, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then Vastwood Surge. Yep. Um, there's three of those, and that's, like, your... Explosive Vegetation, yeah. and then your but Closer. It, but it also has more to it. Oh, so yeah. It's like, <laughs> Explosive Vegetation wasn't good enough. We need to add more to it. Yeah, it's Vegetation on Steroids. Yeah. But it's an uncommon, so it's okay. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and then you have two Workshop War Chiefs. That, I think that card's underrated. Uh, by far. It's like, yeah. you played it against me, and I was like, great. So he gets a 5-3 with haste that makes a 4-4 four, four no, and draws a five, card. 5-3 with trample. Or, if you don't haste, blitz. If you don't and blitz haste it. if you blitz it. Yeah. Like, I think it's actually just better blitz. Yeah, we were talking about that, and I think you're right. You're, yeah. yeah. Then three run and sevens. And, okay, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound really, really weird, but I think that's the weakest card in the deck. Um, it could be. <laughs> there's there's, there's a couple things that I talk about, and, like, we can get to why. Yeah. I don't think necessarily. Two Vorinclex yep. and three Comas, which, that's, like, your pet card. Oh, it's yeah. been your pet card since Kaldheim was spoiled. Yeah, they, so. the card's just, and that's basically where the deck kind of, like... He started with Came three coma in the list and nope. then went from there. Nope, I started with four coma. Oh, four coma. In the list. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, gotcha, this gotcha, is gotcha. way too many coma. And then I can't even read these cards because they're so far away and they're foils. Behold the unspeakable. One behold the unspeakable, one Tamiyo, two invoke the winds, two Shigekis, two more decisive denials for the full playset, a Vivian on the hunt. Yep. Two more worksheets. Just put those in the main deck, right? Two more of those. Two Cultivator Colossus, and then two Titan of Industry. Yep. All right, so obviously the plan is to ramp, play a big threat, and then hopefully protect it. Yeah, so the... And watch the videos. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, so the plan is to either have, like, Innkeeper on two, leading into, like, Topiary Stomper gives you your extra one there. So Topiary Stomper really on three, which takes you to four. When you untap, you put your fifth land... Play Basswood Surge. On turn four, you can attack with Topiary Stomper because you have seven lands in play. And then on turn five, you can cast two more. And then on turn five, yep, you untap, you have eight, you cast two more Topiary Stompers. <laughs> Go up to it ten. It takes you to, to ten, um, and you still have two mana to, to do anything you want. With yeah. Yeah, like, I think you've ran out of cards in your hand at this point. But 
It's um, pretty close, but not necessarily. Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Game. You want early game ramp and late game big stuff. Well, really mid game big stuff. It's, yeah, it starts mid game, but then just carries on because yeah. everything you have is nearly a haymaker. Yeah. Right? It's got to be answered. Yeah, and a lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. It, it has to be answered, and like this replaces itself. This creates more bodies. Yeah. Vorinflex is just really hard to deal with, like because of the whole. Counters yeah. thing, which there's a lot more to it now. Now that there's like the odd counters, like shield counters and first strike counters and stuff like that, all those get rounded down, right? Yeah. So they don't get put on. So the yeah. Permanence. So if they would have put a shield counter on it, you put half, half of a shield, shield counter, counter rounded, rounded down. down. And if this isn't in the deck, but if you were to put a shield counter on something, it's two. It's two. Yeah. Um. Um. And it's so this. It's actually like that's super relevant. Um, and the card's good. It's super relevant in the current format. Yeah, correct. Because of the, obviously, the Streets of Nuke Panic cards that came out with yeah. all the different counters. Um, but I will say, you know, you made the mention that you feel like Renin 7 is probably the, the, the weakest the card. Weakest card. Yeah. And the card I was actually looking to cut is Vorinclex. See, and against me, Vorinclex is really good. Well, and but the thing <laughs> about it is, so Vorinclex is really good against the meta. Mm-hmm. Like it's good against so many things that you almost have to have it, which is the reason it's still in the deck. Um, but Renin Seven, so many times, um, like play it on five. Don't have another land to just plus fill. Yeah, your hand and back you fill your hand back up. Um, and I suppose you do have like some utility lands. Yep. So it's now why I do notice there's no creature lands. Nope. Is there any choice? Like, is there a reason for that choice? Um, just really want everything untapped that you can. Because um, you're really just trying to play one land ahead of everything you can mm-hmm. to, and then like have some protection or fake some protection with safekeeping and decisive denials. Mm-hmm. Um, now the snarl. We'll yeah, we're gonna that. ask why why the one snarl seems really. Awkward. I wanted five when I, when I came down the mana base before I changed the whole mm-hmm. deck over. It was nine basic forests and five basic islands. I only own four. Beta Islands of that art. Gotcha. So, so it's and I didn't want another forest because I needed another, another blue, blue source, and I did not want another. Auto so you're auto. literally making your deck less than ideal My, because yes. you don't have a beta land. And that actually bit me tonight. Did it really? Yes. Nice. Yep. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say I have one Arabian Nights Mountain. Yeah. And I've definitely made a like a Grixis desk deck in one of the previous. Yeah, you make standards. a constellation too. And I'm like, right? ah, I really need two mountains in this list, but we're going one. Yeah. You just play something <laughs> off the side. Of yeah. It. Um. So that's really the reason. And I, so yeah, it would be now. Now, I you don't might know. have to. Yeah, you might have to reassess with all your. Yeah, because I've definitely changed a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. But before it was basically this case because we were fetching out so many basics right. that you have to that have had them. to be forests. Now, this finds either of them, mm-hmm. and this finds either of them, and this finds either of them. So it doesn't actually. So I guess matter. if you're not putting another basic in, wouldn't you just run one of the triomes here? I could, but I don't want it tapped. Sure, you, you would only want to play it on turn one. Otherwise, you want to draw with it, right? Yeah, and then and that's a possibility. Um, like I said, I'm close, I think, with where I want this to be. Um, and, I mean, the deck in itself, um, outside of the, the mana base. But uh, it feels really good. I barely ever see the Snarl. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I do, I tend to see it <laughs> earlier. Well, I tend to see it earlier in the game, um, where it doesn't much matter, and I'm still just progressing uh, the board, like, progressing my board state. I'm really a do-nothing deck with my opponent. Right, yeah, um, you don't you don't even have like fight abilities or anything dude, like decisive. Denial. Oh, decisive denial does. Yeah, do that, yep. but I think I may have only ever used this once in like a month. Yeah, it's always just been mana leak. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So they're not, yeah, you're not really interacting. I guess you have coma to tap things. Yeah, and that's about it. So all in all, it's it's pretty good. It's been very consistent. <laughs> it has. It has. Um, yes, but, I'm allowed to be salty with Garrison because yes. we're best friends, so a, yeah. it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> um, now, the one thing, the problem, I, I think it's the biggest problem I have with the deck, the way it is right now, is I've never sideboarded with it. Yeah, so, what, two weeks ago or last week, you had the learn cards in here still, right? The last lessons? week. Last week I had, last, last week I was playing the... The three mana yeah, field trip. Field trip. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I was just playing three copies of those. So I had like six cards in my sideboard. 
uh, set right. aside for that package. And uh, again, you weren't sideboarding hardly ever then either. I wasn't sideboarding at all. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I, tonight I never you, did, you said tonight you didn't sideboard anything at yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't sideboarded anything. I put stuff in the sideboard um, that I think would be useful. And like some of the stuff is cut out of previous versions of the deck yeah. because I still don't know how they would play. Um, but I guess the biggest changes and led to where I'm at is like I cut the Azusas which was well yeah you cut all of the enchantments right yeah I, so I cut the Azusas because I didn't always have a land an extra land to play mm -hmm. especially late game um, so that was good because I cut it that was at 2 and I cut it for Innkeeper well I lost the life gain from that but it was okay because I gained it back right. from Innkeeper um, and then on so that was on the Azusas on 3 I cut the, um, what was, oh, the field trips. Yeah, the field trips. So cut which, field trips. Which means you don't need lessons anymore. Yeah, so Because the, the three field trips in the previous list were the only way to grab lessons. Correct, they were, the, they were, so, they were it. And so you have three cards in the main deck for seven cards in the sideboard or whatever. Yeah, That's just, and Topiary Stomper does the same thing as the field trip, except that I can find islands with it. And you have a body. Yep, and you have a body for it. And then uh, on four... I cut the Bosejus, the branch of Bosejus. Um, they felt good. On the backside, they give me a nice reach body, but uh, it doesn't actually progress anything other than your more consistency yeah, to think hit your lands. Really, you've you've now had you've added more cards that replace themselves versus yeah. letting you do extra things, and yeah. I think that's the 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 big point. Like well, like the, like you said, the what was it, the Azusa. Yeah. Like, you get to play an extra land, but it doesn't actually replace itself. Yeah. So you don't get the land, you just get to ram. Yeah, and it's and like I said, like the life, the life gain kept me in it, so I had to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, Innkeeper does a great job Yeah, there. I think Innkeeper was the right um, ad. I think Vastwood Surge, if I did, I'm not, I'm going to be honest, didn't even realize that this was a card until somebody brought it up when I played Branch of Boseju a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And I think that is because Zendikar had so many problems with the release. Could be. I didn't yeah. even get product for the set. Yeah, so for like, like three weeks after release day, somebody so. somebody brought this up and they're like, "Well, there's just always an explosive vegetation in standard, yeah. right?" And I was like, "I don't think there is." And they're like, "Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is." So I did some digging. Turns out, it's explosive vegetation with some on huge, <laughs> huge upside. Yeah, because um, you can just swing for lethal or well, very yeah, near yeah, lethal. You added, I think you had three creatures in play. With yeah, it's six it. power, and it makes board. it a way better late game top deck. Yeah, like yep. when you don't need the ramp, you just get to make counters on things. Yep. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's good. So basically, you're pretty happy with the main deck. You're thinking about cutting Vorinclex for what? I don't think know yet? I don't know. I, like I was. I'm almost thinking about like this Vorinclex for War Chiefs. That I could see, but it's so relevant. And I actually, I actually played tonight. Uh, some spoiler alerts. I played it. I played Vorinclex, and then I may have played a Ren and Seven immediately after that. Um, and I may have also in another game that my opponent may have scooped at that point. Um, and then in another game, I uh, I had Ren and Seven. I was kind of taking it up, and then I drew a Vorinclex. And I was able to actually take it up and ultimate the Ren and Seven. And I think after, th I think I'd gone like down and then up a couple times, something like that. So like three or four activations, you know, uh, bidding a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I put like 15 cards in my hand uh, with the Ren and Seven with ultimate. With the ultimate, yeah. And my so it still feels good. It just <laughs> yeah. feels like the weakest card in, yeah. in the deck of all really good cards. Yeah, and I really do need the Ren and Seven. Because it's my only way to deal with flyers outside of color. Ah, reach, yeah. Yep. And then, yep. so basically the sideboard is kind of build it to your meta game because you don't use it anyways. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, and the thought process to it was like the Colossus and the Titan of Industry were really like Coma Vorinclex replacements. Mm -hmm. um, so if like Vorinclex doesn't do anything, I could bring in some, some bigger things. Obviously Titan's just really good. Maybe where it's you swap out one coma for a Titan or something like that. Diversify your threats. Yeah, the War Chiefs were the fact, again, swapping in, like, um, the Foreign Clex for War Chiefs. I've actually sideboarded, pre in previous iterations of the deck, I actually sideboarded out some Renin 7s. Yeah. Because um, I need to go more aggro or just have more bodies. Um, and then the Vivian, I thought, was like, well, 
these are what I want to hit. Yeah. Like, they, it's got a really nice curve to it. It seems perfectly fine. Um, so, cool. I don't know. I guess that's that. Yeah. Thanks for watching the deck tech video. Appreciate it. See y'all later.